Hey everyone, it's Nolan with Blunder2D.com. Uh, today I'm going to pick up right where we left off on our last tutorial. I know it's been a while, um, but I'm excited to be back and start making some more tutorials. Uh, first thing though, I do want to thank everyone who's been subscribing and the views I've been getting. You know, It's not much in comparison to other videos on YouTube, but it was enough for YouTube to uh, give me the ability to... Uh, post longer video, so I won't having to be I won't have to edit anymore to keep my videos under 10 minutes, and that's been throwing my uh, my voice sync and my screencast off, and um, that was bugging me a lot. So now I don't have to worry about that. Uh, so thank you guys. All right, so we're gonna get started. First thing first, open up Blender. All right, so you got Blender open. Um, the first thing you have to do is add a camera. So I'm going to position my 3D cursor by clicking. And your your 3D cursor isn't your your mouse cursor. It's this uh little red target that shows up when you click. So, I'm going to put it right in the middle uh in front view by pressing 1 on the number pad and then in side view by pressing 3 on the number pad. I'm going to uh move it out away from my model, my character. So, after you have that done, you can click Add Camera, and it will add the camera. All right. So now our camera is kind of facing down, and that's not going to do us any good. So um, in Side View, press three to go into Side View, and then press R minus sign ninety, and that will rotate your camera around uh, negative ninety degrees. So, and then you can just press Enter or click, and it and it should snap into place there. All right, so let's press zero and see what we got. Okay, so our uh, our character's kind of cut off here. Um, we're gonna have to either move our camera back or make our character smaller. And I'm choosing to move the camera back. Just fiddle with your camera until you get it right. Um, a better way of doing this though is actually going to your camera settings here and over in object data it looks like a an old camera with a with a film spools on the top you just click that and you switch it to orthographic and now you can see our camera is just it's just huge um so we're going to make it a little smaller by making the orthographic scale a 5 and well let's make it a Four instead and let's see what we got okay our character fits in there awesome um it doesn't matter where you move it here on this uh, i believe it's x axis and if you press f12 and it renders you'll see that no matter where you put it it's all the same he he doesn't really move vertically or he doesn't get bigger or anything so we're just going to move it uh, back here i'm going to press h to hide it all right, so we don't need to worry about the camera anymore. You can still always press zero to see uh, where he is in the camera, um, even though you can't see the camera. All right, so um, now animating in Blender is all about keyframes, and uh, what a keyframe is is it's like you're telling Blender where a certain object is at a certain time, and you use this timeline down here to determine the time and time is measured in frames so if you're starting here this is frame zero um, it's not set to render on frame zero so if you uh, were to set all of your pieces here if you wanted this to be your starting position uh, this is probably where you'd want to keyframe all of your all of your parts to make sure they're not they're not moving around funny when you uh, go to animate them later. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're at frame zero. Uh, frame zero is not going to be rendered. So we're going to press uh, A to select all. I. And this will create the keyframe. And we'll just, um, just be safe. We'll click location rotation scale. So what that means is the location, the rotation, and the scale of these individual planes are going to be locked in for frame zero until we tell them to be changed um, in another frame. So 
Uh, the only thing I'm going to show you guys how to do today, though, is animate the arm. Uh, it's pretty much the same basic concept for every other piece of the character. Um, there are other ways of animating, like you could uh, uh, dig into armatures and learn how to use armatures and link them together. But uh, today I'm just going to show you the basics of animating. So we have our arm here. Um, we want to be able to to rotate it. Now, I was actually working with this earlier, so let me move it back to how it was before. Okay, so the 3D cursor is about in the middle of the plane. Now, if you try to rotate it, it's just going to sp uh, spin around, but that's not really how an arm moves. So, what we want to do is make it so it spins right about here where I'm placing my 3D cursor. That way, when we rotate, it's not... You know, it's not like free floating and moving all over the place. It's it's moving like it should, like it like there's a joint there. So what we're gonna do is place your cursor exactly where you want it to rotate from. Um, see if you go into the side view, you can see my cursor is actually way out in front of my arm, and and that's no good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click. I'm gonna click right here, right where my plane is. So it's right on top of it. And I'm going to reposition this in front view. And then go to Origin under Object Tools on the left. And click Origin to 3D Cursor. Alright. Now when we rotate, it'll rotate around around where our 3D Cursor is. And you can even, you can even move it. And that's just the new Origin. But it's a little too high. I don't like, it's almost like it's moving up. When it rotates, I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and move it again. Um, if I could get it a little closer. Oh, that's not where I want it. Okay, I'm going to have to change the origin origin again. There we go. I probably want it right about there. Let's see what we got. Okay, that's a lot better. And then I'm just going to move it out here a little bit. All right. Awesome. So, um, if you move your timeline at the bottom, if you've moved your arm at all, just snap it back to its original position. But it will still have its new origin. All right. So now we can get into animating. Um, so, down here in your timeline, if you follow my uh, mouse, you have your frames. You can see the, the 20th frame, the 40th frame, and uh, there's frames in between them. You can actually use the scroll button on your mouse to zoom in. So you can see the 10 frame, the 20 frame, the 30 frame. Uh, you can zoom in even farther to see the 5s, but I'm just going to leave it at 10s. So, our 0 frame has our arm at this neutral position. If we move our timelines, um, this little line here, that it really ind it indicates what frame you're, you're editing at the moment. So we're going to move this to um, the 30th frame. So that means if you're animating at 15 uh, frames per second, it's going to take two seconds for it to get there. So, uh, oh, first things first. I have my end frame ridiculously high. I was uh, playing with stuff earlier. But you can set this to... Um, we'll set it to around 100 right now. And then we'll just make it bigger uh, as we need it. Alright. So, at our 30th frame, as you can see, indicated by this line, we're at the 30, the 30 frame. We're going to rotate our arm up to a waving position. All right, and then all we have to do is press I, rotation, because we're just moving the rotation of the arm. And now, if you go back to your timeline, you can start it over from zero, and you can see Blender automatically creates uh, each frame where the, uh, where the arm should be. If it's going to get from here to here, Blender knows, um, Blender does all the in-between per, per frame moves it by itself. It's all automatic. Isn't that amazing? <laughs>
All right, so now you got your arm going up. But what about waving? So he kind of has his arm. Uh, now you're going to want it to kind of oscillate back and forth, uh, left and right. So now we're going to say every every second his hand, you know, his hand or whatever, that that's more of a nub, a stub or something, it, it moves only, you know, we only want it to move like that far or something. Something like this, every second. All right, so we're going to go to 30, and we're going to add 15 seconds. So that would be 45. All right, and we're going to rotate it about that far and click I, rotation. We're going to go another 15 seconds, which would be 60 rotate it back press i rotation another 15 seconds should be 75 rotate press i rotation and then uh 75 plus 15 would be 90 so i'm going to rotate it back and press i rotation now if you you can use these controls down here at the bottom to uh put your put uh set the frame that you're on like i can jump to the first frame right here and we can play it oh and look he's waving and it'll just keep replaying by itself yay we created our first animation all right so um now i'm going to show you how to render it well we're going to press pause here uh the first thing we have to do is make sure that we we kind of counted this to make sure we counted this in a way that we use that 15 number uh that's our frames per second so i was saying if um we're 15 frames equals one second so we want to make sure we actually render at that so we're going to go here to our render settings it's this little um digital camera looking icon and if you scroll down you'll see um under dimensions you'll see a frame rate we're going to change that to custom 15 all right so it's at 15 frames per second um, all right so now we have well I have my resolution set kind of low right now so you see if I render um at the current frame that I'm at he's real blurry now I don't want to take I don't want it to take forever to render and I, I kind of don't want to Pause the pause the screencast. So I'm not gonna make it too high, but you can make it as high as you want. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at 30. Let me see how that looks. Okay, that's not too bad. Well, it kind of is, but it'll be alright. So I have it at 30, but you could set it at 100, and that would be you know very high definition, I guess. Um, so just checking checking our timeline. Our start frame is one. Our end frame is 100 uh, we only need it to be at 90 but i'm just going to leave it at 100 so there's that extra space at the end of the video where you see his arm just up all right and now i'm going to scroll down um this is probably <laughs> the hardest part of rendering to me is figuring out which um render setting is going to work to to export my video and if I'm including audio it's a pain in the butt for me I don't know why but um what we're gonna do is we're going to under output we gotta select our destination folder so I'm just gonna save it to my desktop I'm gonna click accept and let's see um we got to uh, choose what kind of what kind of movie it's gonna make. Now, since we don't have any audio, we're just going to make it a AVI AVI JPEG. All right. So now, when it outputs it, it's gonna output it. It's gonna use the name of the um of your save file, and then it's going to add the frames usually, and then it's going to uh, save it to the desktop as AVI JPEG. What it does is it just renders uh, every frame individually and it uh, compresses it all into uh, a video file. 
So, just looking over everything, it looks like we should be good to go. If I go ahead and click animation, um, I don't see anything that could go wrong. So, I'm going to go ahead and click animation, and it's going to start from frame 1 and render all the way to frame 100. And as you can see, Blender is animating each frame individually. And the arm's going up. And then it's going to start waving. So um, I'm glad it's a short video. Otherwise, you'd be waiting here a long time. No, I'd probably edit it out. But um, like I said, I try to want, I want to stay away from editing and see if that makes uh, audio syncing a lot easier for me. All right, so everything's working good. Uh, if we go to our video file, once it's finished, we should be able to, to watch it without a problem. And it, you, can, you can watch where it's at up here. It says frame 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. Um, so you know we're almost there because uh, we only uh, told Blender to animate to frame 100. And 10 more frames, and we should be able to watch our video. All right, it's done. So I'm going to minimize this. And as you can see, okay, so it didn't use the the save file name, but it did use the frames. So it said 1 through 100.avi. And you can just rename that or whatever you want to do. Um, but I'm going to open it up with VLC. Here's my, my frog I made a little while ago. Then you can see our turtle here. Oh, let me play it again. It's a short video. And as you can see, his waves kind of, kind of slow, slow like a turtle. But um, you know that's not a problem. You can, if you want it to be faster, all you do is increase the frames per second, or you can uh, move the keyframes closer together. You know, whatever, whatever you want to do for a two D animation, you really don't. Uh, with planes and stuff, you really don't need thirty frames per second. Um, you could if you wanted. That will increase your render time and a lot of things. It's 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 really it's not bad at all at 15 frames per second. Um, you could probably even get away with 12. So uh, what I would recommend doing is just making your keyframes closer together instead of instead of being you know 15 keyframes apart, make it like seven or something. You know, half it. Um, then well, you can't half 15, but that's why I said seven, seven or eight. You'd you'd want to do. Um, so. That's basically animating your 2D character. Now you can do this with anything. You can do it with your with your legs. You could uh, um, flip this leg around. RZ90. Oop, no, that's not what I want. RZ180. All right, so you could have this leg here. Move it out in front so it's not awkward looking. Go back to front view. Um, you'd have to you'd have to set your And you could just, you know, you could rot you could animate all of us, animate his legs, and animate him waving. And you could have like a, a walking, a walk and wave animation. So play around with that, uh, practice this, and I look forward to showing you something new in our next tutorial. All right, thanks guys. Uh, like, subscribe, comment if you have questions. I've been trying to uh, make sure that if anyone posts on YouTube, I. I comment back and I give you guys feedback for the feedback that you're giving me. So um, thank you. And remember to check us out at blender2d.com. All right. Have a great day. Bye.